two years into its disastrous economic crisis, Lebanon is falling apart. Deadly violence in Beirut in October 2021 was only the latest step down a steeply downward trajectory. Crisis Group's Lebanon expert, Heiko Vimen, has been closely monitoring the situation. We are right now on the last few hundred meters um, of the established political parties kicking the can down the road, uh, using whatever they have uh, left in terms of uh, resources, foreign reserves in the central bank, uh, a credit here, a credit there from the World Bank, uh, some money from the IMF, to basically keep institutions going at a very uh, low level to give people six perhaps ten hours of electricity per day give state employees a, f a few uh, bonuses here and there to keep them from deserting or running away completely and to prepare for elections i don't have any uh, prospects for my future anymore which is kind of sad to say but i feel like i'm just surviving until i can get out of here uh, my family was quite affected by the crisis, specifically with our nephew, because um, he's not even one year old yet. So it's always been quite difficult to find milk or to find the exact medications that we need, whether for him or for my mom, or my sister or myself. 80% of Lebanese now live in poverty. Hundreds of thousands have lost their jobs, while their savings are trapped in a liquid banks. I'm one of the people, my money in the bank, they didn't give it to me. Most of the people now become not poor, under poor. So, problems now start. It has become really draining to wake up every morning, pretend everything is fine when everything has changed around us really fast. Political parties continue to profit from these losses, using the growing desperation of those they represent as a tool to keep themselves in power. Uh, I have a history with some with my party. You know what I did first time, I said yes, I will vote for this person because they usually pay money for this. So I got the money, I didn't vote, so I'm in trouble. There is many people not happy with what I'm saying. To show my face, I think there will be someone who will look after me. During the crisis, some parties such as Hezbollah have used their constituents' increasing dependency on them to consolidate their influence. Other elites have acted out of greed, siphoning off funds for their own personal gain. It's like, let's say we get a fund and this fund from any, any country outside. This fund would reach Lebanon and uh, would go right through to the pockets of those in charge. Basically, it's stealing. They were either just botching it or they were also uh, trying to steal the country and trying to take advantage of their positions and their power. You know, under the guise of benefiting their sect or wherever they belong to, but it's actually to benefit themselves and, uh, and their bloodline. So the accumulation of many, 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 many initiatives like that uh, took us to this crisis, basically. It's simple, it's kind of a Ponzi scheme. But how did we get here? And can anything be done? In 2019, when the first signs of the crisis began to materialize, many Lebanese took to the streets, protesting their country's decline. The political infighting which followed left Lebanon without a functioning government for 13 months. The devastating port explosion in August 2020 was a brutal wake-up call that things weren't going to improve anytime soon. The blast uh, destroyed uh, all our house. It destroyed my house. I live with two kids. My daughter uh, was blast on her face and on her, on her hand. My wife, she broke her shoulder by the blast. At this moment, 
we don't live in our house yet. We're still repairing our, our home. It was very difficult. But I still remember the voice of my daughter when I took her to the, to the hospital. Very hard. After the explosion, everything uh, changed. I'm not talking about political, I'm talking about the market here. Uh, too many people lost faith in the market. So they're starting pulling out their money, their cash, and their business. Whoever can sell his small business, just sell it and leave. Despite the formation of a new government in September 2021, politicians continue to drag their feet in implementing reforms, stalling processes that could undermine their grip on power or reveal the extent of their corruption. ما بيقدروا يعملوا شيء اكثر شيء بيقدروا يعملوا انه هن يبرموا وجههم او يسكروا تمهم اكثر من هيك ما فيهم يعملوا ما ما عم بدافع عنهم اكيد ما بدافع عن ولا سياسي بلبنان لانه هن اعدائنا عدوين لنا هن سياسيين لبنان يلي بيؤذوا شعبهم يلي بيخبوا البنزين والمزوت عن شعبهم يلي بيخبوا الدواء بالديبويات عن شعبهم نحن لما بدنا نجيب بنزين ومزوت على لبنان لحتى يساعد اللبنانيه منجيب ل... لكذا شهر مش منجيب only for 10 or 15 days ومش لكل الناس بيكونوا واختفى هلا البنزين والمزود نحن نوقف تهريب بنزين ومزود على سوريا ما بيعود في عنا أزمة بنزين ومزود بلبنان ومعروفين مين يلي بيخربوا لبنان ومين يلي عم بيهربوا ومين يلي حميون لي يلي عم بيهربوا فما حدا يجي يعمل حاله قدام الناس أنه أنا بدي ساعد البلد ومن تحت الطاولة يكون عم بيخربوا للبلد During earlier years of crisis the Lebanese believed they could muddle through no longer. The economy and politics are barely under control, spinning deeper into a vortex. None, almost none, expected the collapse to be that fast. It was literally one week, new bank laws were applied and we couldn't get our money out and the new crisis started right away. Sorry, this is one of part of it actually. It's good that it went off. Well, literally now we're on zero, almost zero hours of uh, government electricity. We're on generators always. <laughs> it's crazy. How long does it normally take to turn back on? So now the generator is off until two. So that because oh. we have one generator in the building, it needs to be, uh, it needs to take a break uh, because it's on 24 hours. So they, we take a break for like the next three hours now. We're going to be in dark. Does that bring in fewer customers or people aren't really bothered by it at this point? People are actually used to it. I was surprised how much people are used to it. But yet, yes, of course, this affects the business as well. You, you can, just can't see what you're purchasing. And has the price of running electricity gone up because you have to use the generator? Well, most certainly. Uh, and because the, the, the fossil fuel now, the diesel, is priced to the fresh dollars, which hires the cost significantly for the product. Fuel is now unaffordable for many Lebanese, making it difficult for people to travel for work or education and making it harder for businesses to survive. So we have to close the store because the generator was done off at 3 o'clock. So uh, we cannot sell without electricity. The collapse of the banking system means that salaries have lost 90% of their real value and are still going down. I'm just like any Lebanese, other Lebanese. Uh, we don't get pay. We just, we're, most of us are like, let's say freelancers. We're like, if I'm like fitness trainer or taxi driver or delivery guy or most of us, we do these jobs. So if it's main job or a second job, but most of Lebanese, we have teachers doing taxi drivers, we have doctors doing taxi drivers because we need more income. But now it's not worth it anymore because now six millions is like, what is it? Six millions is like $300. What can I do with that? I cannot even fix my car with that. You know what I mean? So, so people lost faith in government and politicians and everything so i don't know i don't know what to say about that actually it's very sad we don't we don't deserve this
We deserve better than this. In the security sector, the collapsing value of salaries is creating new dangers. The pressure on the army is enormous and uh, the pay is uh, nothing, uh, even for officers, you know. So it's only a question of time that this army will dis disintegrate. Uh, a soldier, a junior soldier, right now earns um, roughly $70 a month, right? And now, clearly, uh, even when there were still subsidies, uh, that was not enough to f even feed yourself and even on your family. What the army and also the police force do is they, um, they look the other way as people work uh, second jobs. And so that obviously affects the functioning of the security forces. You call the police when there's anything like petty criminalities happening, they don't show up even you know? who pose himself, Who puts themselves in harm's way for $50, $70 a month, right? Uh, you can imagine that at some point um, these police forces may be tempted to, um, to accept bribes if they, do, if they don't already. They are not people who are here to protect us. I feel like a lot of them just got this job because of its benefits and because of the connections that they have. October uprising has proved to us that the army are just here to protect the government and they're never here to protect the people, especially after shooting at us and after, especially after August 4, it has become really problematic. And the security situation will continue to deteriorate and that means more and more people will feel compelled to, uh, to organize security by themselves in their areas be it with private uh, security companies, be it with the help of political parties. Some political parties, Hezbollah most prominently, uh, are very well organized, uh, have means for social control, have even sometimes their own police forces, their own security forces, and they will manage this. The biggest of Lebanon's militias, Hezbollah, plays an increasingly prominent role in Lebanon, undermining the functioning of state institutions with the creation of its own institutions. Hezbollah is very big, he doesn't want to hear anyone, he's still a leader, 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 and everything is not a leader, it's not a leader. I don't know anyone who loves his leader, he's against his leader, he's against his leader. I don't know anyone who loves his leader, he's hurting the gas and the gas from his leader, and he's sending them to other people. To be honest, they did good things actually for our internal people. Let's say at the borders, 2000, yeah, it was a good thing for Lebanon kicking out Israelis. 2006, they did the same also. That was good for, uh, for the south area there at the borders. At the same time when ISIS started coming from Syria, oh yeah, they did a good job. Wow. Hezbollah, they decided to take the first line. They pushed them back, they were coming, they pushed them back and kicked them away. But we have to keep in mind uh, that uh, there is a very, um, there's a very clear asymmetry of power. You have uh, Hezbollah, which has a veritable army, so that's not a secret, but it's clear that this party and this particular actor is not matched by anybody else. You know? so, an escalation in the sense of a full-fledged civil war, as we imagine civil wars, is not something that anybody would expect right now. But what we need to, what we do expect, is that the country will disintegrate uh, also on the security level. So you will have these neighborhood uh, security arrangements. Uh, they will eventually um, come into uh, conflict with one another. Plus, of course, you have. Um, sensitivities uh, between areas, political sensitivities, sectarian sensitivities. And so you can imagine these like sequences of altercations, of armed altercations between various neighborhoods and areas and security networks uh, that become the norm and that contribute to the country further falling apart into, a into really a mosaic of areas under control of the, of the authority.
know they're definitely not a trusted source of protection because obviously they don't give it uh, for free uh, and even if they did that's not the, the answer the answer is not to segment protection or to, to fragment it uh, that way based on sex or on uh, the, the protection that they grant is it's also beyond that sectarian identity it's also a way to, to kind of ensure loyalty to uh, whether for, for to vote for them for the elections or the overall legitimacy that they that they kind of want to uh, get ba uh, get back to we can all feel it the situation is very difficult and we all know this but it's not impossible to deal with if we cooperate as Lebanese since September a new government is trying to get Lebanon onto the path to reform but it only has months until parliamentary and then presidential elections in 2022. It is likely that the elections will keep the current establishment in power. Our people here, they don't know how to run countries because they are war lords. They know how to kill people for money. Most of them, the main guys, are the same guys from the civil war. Go back in history, you will find out that they were killing each other that time. So all of them, they have bloods in their hands. And it's our mistake. We're still voting for the same guys. I know that people or the general population is clinging to any kind of hope, no matter how effective or not it might be. But at the same time, I know, I know uh, playing the institutional politics game to get to the parliament is not really going to yield any actual results because, because of the uh, electoral law and the sectarian nature it has. And uh, obviously in a crisis, clientelism is going to... Uh, is gonna be like applied again and uh, by the by the traditional political parties because we're in a desperate situation. Despite these concerns, elections could still provide an opening for reform. It's possible that they can begin the process of cracking the hegemony of the established parties and prompting them to change their calculations of political cost and benefit. It is vital that elections are held on time. In the meantime, all concerned must work to stave off state failure, or there may be nothing left to save. The situation in Lebanon now, if you don't have a fresh dollar, you, can, you cannot live here. I don't know what will happen after, but now we cannot, we cannot continue like this. Do you see any end to this crisis? No. No. Lebanon is dying. Outside, they respect the animal. Here, they don't respect the people, the human people, they are dying slowly. We don't know how to plan for tomorrow, not five years. This is a crisis by itself because we really can't forecast now. It's a matter of a chance. We're, we're hoping that this would be over soon, but uh, rationally speaking, this might take a decade or maybe more. The problem is not the religion, not, it is the politics. Michel is my friend, he, he is he's a Christian. I'm a Christian and he's Muslim. I'm a Muslim, but the same problems. He is Lebanese and I am a Lebanese. Yes. Aid can save lives and livelihoods by supporting the needs of individual Lebanese as well as some public institutions and parts of the private sector that can still be rescued. Having seen the unmitigated disaster that is Syria, it's in nobody's interest that Lebanon become the next failed state in the Eastern Mediterranean.